So I didn't read as many books as I did last month, and I'm kind of upset about that, but it's okay. These are the books I read in February 2022. I'm actually reading two books right now, a self-help book called Best Self and then a crime mystery novel called Museum of Desire. And I was trying to finish Museum of Desire so I can add it into this video, but my boyfriend's like, you know what, don't force yourself. And you know what, that was some good advice. I'm like, I don't need to force myself to read because then I won't like reading. And you know what, maybe I'm a little burnt out because I didn't read as many books as I did last month. Let's go over some stats. In February, I read four books, read 1,136 pages, had two three-star ratings, one four-star rating, one five-star rating, read 75% fiction and 25% nonfiction books. I spent 23 hours reading, and had the different genres of self-help, romance, mystery, and Christianity. So the first book I read is called All About Love, New Visions by Bell Hooks. This book offers radical new ways to think about love by showing its interconnectedness in our private and public lives. Hooks explains how our everyday notions of what it means to give and receive love often fail us, and how these ideals are established in early childhood. She offers a rethinking of self-love without narcissism that will bring peace and compassion to our personal and professional lives and asserts the place of love to end struggles between individuals, in communities, and among societies. Moving from the cultural to the intimate, Hooks notes the ties between love and loss and challenges the prevailing notion that romantic love is the most important love of all. So I give this book five stars. In the beginning, I didn't really like reading it because it felt like I was reading something for school. But as I read further, I really enjoyed the book and thought that it had so many good points and it was really interesting. I can understand how some people wouldn't like this book because it kind of talks about religion, but it didn't really bother me at all. This is actually the first book I read that I put tabs in. I think I'll definitely keep this book and read it again in the future for sure. My favorite chapters in this book have to do with community and romance. I love love and everything about love. And I was walking in Barnes & Noble and this book actually stood out to me on a table. And all I did was read the cover. I walked past it and then I stopped just mid-step and then I went back and I got the book randomly. It just spoke to me. And I'm glad I did because this is definitely a book that I'm going to be keeping. I'm going to probably read again in the future. Even if you're skeptical about this book, it makes you learn about love, dive deep into it, and also have new perspectives on it. So it's really interesting and I would give it a read. I actually gave this four stars in the beginning and then I thought to myself, you know what, if I'm gonna keep this book and want to read it again in the future, I think it should have a higher rating. So that's why it has five stars. The next book I read is called The Shack by William P. Young. Mackenzie Allen Phillips' youngest daughter, Missy, is found murdered in an abandoned shack. Four years later, he returns to the scene of the crime due to a note apparently from God. So I gave this book three stars. The part that intrigued me about it was the religious part. And in the beginning, I was really into it. It started off really great, very intriguing. I really wanted to know what was gonna happen. But later on, without any spoilers, it just became kind of unbelievable and strange. So that's why my ratings kind of went down. I feel like I definitely would have rated this higher if I was going through a loss because I would have been relating to the character more. I will say that this book has really good metaphors and lessons. You can learn about love, relationships, God, the Trinity, forgiveness, and it was pretty interesting to read about that in this book. I hear there's a movie, so I would like to watch the movie in the future. I'm curious to see how the characters will be portrayed, as well as the beautiful visuals that are described in this book. The third book I read is called Split Second by Katherine Coulter. I don't have this book because I lent it to my sister-in-law, so I can't show it off. FBI agents Savage and Sherlock try to bring down a serial killer, and they discover that the killer has blood ties to Ted Bundy. Savage and Sherlock are joined by agents Carlisle and McKnight, and the chase is on. At the same time, Agent Carlisle learns from her dying father that her grandfather was murdered by her grandmother. She moves into her grandmother's mansion and finds the truth, but also faces a new mystery that has been passed down from mother to daughter for generations. So the action started off really fast and it was very intriguing. I was really into the book. In the summary, it says that the serial killer in this book has ties to a long dead monster. And I had no idea who it referred to until I saw online that it had to do with Ted Bundy. And that made the book even more enticing to read. So sorry if I spoiled it, but yes, the serial killer has to do with Ted Bundy. You can find it online at a lot of places, I'm sure, in the reviews and everywhere. But I honestly think that knowing that it had to do with Ted Bundy made it even more intriguing to me and made me want to read it more. 
So I was really into the book. Some parts really did creep me out. There was actually three side stories and I was waiting for maybe one or two of them to merge into the main one, but it didn't. I enjoyed the characters a lot, even though I did kind of get confused as to who was who. I think that's a me problem though. So I thought it was a good book, but I didn't think it was one of my favorites. Although I would love to read more books from this author. The last book I read is called If I Stay by Gail Foreman. 17 year old Mia only remembers what happens after the car accident, watching her own damaged body being taken from the wreck. She struggles to figure out what she has lost, what she has left, and the very difficult choice she must make. So I gave this book three stars. I didn't think I would like it as much as I did. I enjoyed the characters, the stories that were told, and how it jumped from past to present. It was a pretty tragic story, but an interesting one, and I did tear up a few times. I wish it was an epilogue though. I know that it was probably the author's intent to keep it that way, but it left me hanging. I probably would have rated it higher if it had more at the end. This is also a movie, and I want to see it. I don't really listen to classical music, but it did make me appreciate it a little bit more. So those are all the books I read in February 2022. Let me know in the comments below if you enjoyed any of these books, if you are considering reading any of them, and if you get burnt out too and what you do about that. I hope you have a wonderful day wherever you are and that you don't get burnt out like I did. I'll see you guys in the next video. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. Bye!